Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here with another episode of My Summer Car. Just spraying ourselves with some mosquito spray to get ready to go. It is uh, 5 o'clock in the evening, which gives us some daylight to spend. When we last left off, we got the suspension on as a whole. So the first step in mounting the engine is making sure that the engine can fit into the engine bay. So we need to actually lower our hydraulics here in our tractor, which I think we can get to. Yeah, just by uh, right clicking here, the tractor doesn't need to be on and that will drop the car uh, low enough that we can fit the engine inside the bay and we can see that the car is indeed resting on its tires. The suspension is holding up. So without further ado, let's wheel out the engine to our driveway, move the motor hoist. Uh, try. I don't know if we go over the, uh, the pit there, whether or not the hoist will fall in the pit, but that's certainly not what we want to do. And in an ideal world, we will lower the engine into the bay and we will see uh, bolts appear right here on the engine mount and that is going to be a size 11. The last time I played this game, and tried to put in my engine. Uh, this was the longest process. So let's lower it down and I'll speed this up for you. And you will see me and my struggles putting the engine in the bay. So one moment. If the engine falls off your engine hoist, uh, well, you have to start from scratch and uh, let that go. Tell you what I'll do, I will finagle around with this a bit and I will come back to you uh, when I have the engine in place. I won't bolt it down yet so you can see about where this engine needs to be in the grand scheme of things. But if your engine ever does fall off the hoist, uh, you can lower it, lower the hoist like so, grab your 10 spanner and unbolt uh, these bolts right here all the way and retighten them and that will sort of force the engine back on the hoist so it's a little uh, a little finicky but you see right there it's back on the hoist so I'll make sure that these are tightened down so it has a little, little less chance of falling off and I will be right back with you. It's time to get this engine back in here. All right, so what you may have seen me do is uh, push, the in, or push the vehicle into the garage here. You can use the J key and sort of walk into your car and you can use the Q key to sort of push it. And because it's freewheeling, I figure it would be best to try to mount the engine here. That way I can get uh, below the car and uh, do the engine that way, get to the bolts that way. And besides, we need that to mount the exhaust. So it's better to get the car over the pit now uh, so we don't have to do that later. So this is certainly the most time consuming part for sure, uh, getting the engine mounted correctly. Uh, it's all about the height that the engine is on as well as position and as pixel perfect as this game sort of needs to be, um, it's definitely a challenge for sure. Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna run out here and grab my uh, toolbox here uh, and close the door apparently. Uh, we need our size 11, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and head down into the pit to see uh, if this is close enough for government work or if there is more work to do here. Looks like there is more work to do. Essentially, I need to sort of bring it forward on the car just a little bit. This needs to be close to this. This needs to be uh, close to, wait. There we go, all right. So if it's close enough, aim just a little bit below the engine mounting point and with your 11 and these bolts will automatically appear and there are three bolts here for the engine. All right, close enough for government work, that wasn't so bad. Now we need to uh, attach the half shafts to the gearbox and those are going to be our nine millimeter screws that we have here. Uh, since the engine is mounted, we technically don't need our engine mount and or our engine hoist anymore. Let's go ahead and undo our engine hoist and get it out of here uh, so we got some room to move around and work. All right, so you saw the front of the car really dip down. I mean, engines are heavy, no doubts there. Let's grab our nine millimeter, which we already did, and work on our, um, our half shafts, which are right here next to uh, the transmission, right here. Did I not grab, did I not grab the nine? I thought I grabbed the nine. Nope, grab the 10. That's right, we unhooked our uh, engine joist. All right, those six bolts are done, and now we mount the hubcaps, which are optional, but I think they add a little bit uh, character to the car, and the uh, completionist in me says, you know, don't leave any uh, parts on. So this is the rear left hubcap, and these just slide on, no bolting required. Hubcaps are on, uh, make sure that you have your spark, plugs, spark plugs in and hand tight. Just give those a scroll up on the mouse wheel, make sure they, see I had one tick that was not good for that spark plug. Next is the battery. Luckily, that one is pretty easy. The battery fits right here in the battery box. Right there, the battery is attached. Next are the electrics to the battery. So we need to find uh, the electrics right here. And they mount to the body and sort of wrap around to the front. So you're aiming about right there. So the electrics require two eight millimeter bolts. Next up is the fuel strainer, which is one eight millimeter bolt. And luckily we already have it. So let's grab our fuel strainer. Now the fuel strainer was a little bit difficult uh, for me to put on. So excuse me while I uh, try to run around this car and see exactly where it fits. I believe it was on this back uh, firewall right here. So one moment and I will see where this fuel strainer goes. All right, so the fuel strainer is right here on the uh, passenger side corner and that connects uh, right up in there and it requires one bolt that we need to find right behind it like so. Next is the radiator and it takes four seven millimeter bolts. So let's head over to our toolbox and grab our four seven millimeter bolts and our radiator. Luckily the radiator is really easy to put in. This is actually uh, backwards. We want the fan facing the engine here, and we sort of drop down and bring it forward. Radiator is right here. You can see the gap for the radiator itself, and there are uh, four bolts for the radiator. All 
All right, radiator is in and mounted. Next are the radiator hoses, which do not require any bolting, but they do require to be in a specific place. Let's grab radiator hose one and see where that one comes off of. I believe radiator hose one is right here on the right side of the radiator or the, uh, the driver's side connecting the radiator to um, the left side of the engine here. Next is radiator hose two in the back corner. This is a shorter one. This also looks like it sort of runs. Let's see if I can get it in its proper placement. One good thing about being a radiator hose, you know that, well, it has to be close enough to the radiator. I'll set this off to the side for now and grab radiator hose three. Uh, with it being a longer hose, it seems like this should be an easier hose to place. Although, you, if you know anything about this game, um, something that looks to be easy is certainly uh, way more difficult than it needs to be. Let's actually take a look at the radiator itself and see where these hoses uh, may be coming from. Obviously, we have the one up top. It looks like the radiator hoses may run through the bottom here. Well, unsuccessful in finding the places for the radiator hose. However, we are a little bit hungry, a little bit thirsty, and a little bit tired. So let's grab a sausage off the floor. Floor sausage unite. Let's grab a drink. And let's head to bed and see if we can get these uh, radiator hoses on in the morning. All right, waking up. I don't know what time it is. Uh, looks to be six in the morning, which is good for us. Uh, the sun is on the rise and we have um, our radiator hoses to place. So let me get back on that and I will come back with you whenever we find wherever the crap these radiator hoses go. All right, I don't know how it works. But this hose, if I point down here to the bottom left-hand corner of the, uh, the radiator, it looks like it runs along that underside there. And if I had to make a guess, if I was a betting person, and I'm not, uh, the other radiator hose will run from it. So it's a pretty good indication of where exactly this may go. It looks like they sort of fit together as such. I'll have to grab it a little bit more um, appropriately and try to feed this end right here. There it was. There's a check mark. Pixel hunting at its finest. If you play any hidden object games where you have to be uh, pixel perfect when you click on the picture, uh, this is the game for you. All right, so it runs up and over and into the back of the engine. So the radiator hoses are in and set. Next is the oil filter, which also does not require any bolting, but it needs to be placed. Um, we may be able to get to it from the bottom, and it should be pretty close to the oil pan. There it was. Saw it for just a brief moment. There it was. All right, so it goes on the front of the engine there and just a couple uh, scroll up with the mouse wheel and the oil filter is good. Next is the clutch master cylinder. And uh, these three master cylinders are placed right here on the firewall towards the back. So we have to sort of uh, move over here in this general region. It's almost where those bolts are. You see those bolts on the firewall there? 
that looks to be uh, the place. Now the clutch master cylinder has one nine millimeter bolt and two eight millimeter bolts. So let's grab the nine, see if we can find the nine. Um, probably if I had to make a guess, we can do the eights and then the nine actually connects it um, elsewhere. So those two bolts there, um, I do not see where that third bolt would be unless it's on the inside of the firewall. But I don't think anything is coming through. Well, I'm wrong. <laughs> it's coming through the firewall toward the, uh, the driver's cockpit. So that's going to be coming out right there is our nine. So that connects the uh, master cylinder to the clutch pedal here. Next up is the brake master cylinder. Looking for the brake master cylinder. And it also uh, mounts right here on these uh, bolts in the back. With a little bit of love and care, we can put that right where it needs to be. And um, of course, with it being the master cylinder, uh, this part is the part that's going to poke through the firewall and attach to the brake pedal. If I can just get down there in a perfect world, we can sort of dr drop it, that, drop it. There we go. And the clutch or the brake master cylinder is once again uh, two nines and an eight. So I'll use my nine, attach the brake pedal through the firewall, magical style. Grab our nine, or our eight, I'm sorry, and let's uh, attach that the exact same way as the clutch master cylinder. All right, next up is the clutch line. That's the gear link. We need the clutch line, brake line, radio, clutch line. So the clutch line is going to run along the back of the firewall here, and this is pretty tricky placement you saw as I uh, squatted down but there we go the clutch lining runs from the master cylinder all the way around to here uh, or the clutch line and it uses two seven millimeter bolts so we'll pop a squat here grab our seven spanner get back into the engine block and right here to the clutch master cylinder and then around follow it around to right there so our clutch line is in. Uh, next is our brake line, and it takes eight seven millimeter bolts. So this boy doesn't play around. Look at look at this contraption. Look at this contraption. Let's see if we can get a proper angle on it. We want to grab it uh, dead center and even if we can. So when we hop into the engine compartment we can essentially place it where it needs to be. There it was. Just a brief flash, and here we go. So let's follow all of our uh, brake lines around. Okay, so we lost power for a minute. That's fascinating. It helps if you have just like a little bit of something something to stand up on. But unfortunately, I did not. But we'll make do with what we have here. So there are the uh, seven. Let's see, we need eight. We need one more. Gotta love those rolling blackouts. I have no idea why uh, we were losing power. What I'll do is I'll push the car. Uh, wow, that's a little odd. I'll push the car a little bit over so we have something to stand on on this side. Mm -hmm. 
There it is. Found it right there on the bottom. So that is the uh, eight brake lines. And then there are four brake lines at each wheel. So we have to uh, hop out of here. Oh, well, maybe that's why they were rolling blackouts. Power was about to get cut out. All right, so let's see if we can get down into the, uh, the engine well here. Look for our brake line. So there's one there that goes to the caliper. Conversely, one also running here to the caliper. And then um, two to the back. And these guys are actually... All right, there's one, so conversely, uh, we can find the other right here, right on the, right here on the, um, on this bar right here, the trailing arm. So, I believe that will be a good start. Uh, in the next episode, when we come back, uh, we will start working on the interior of the car and get the car sort of sealed off with the doors, the hood, uh, and all that stuff, and I believe we will be ready to uh, to start this baby up. So uh, let's uh, close up shop here. I was hearing rumors that um, if you leave everything open, people will try to steal your stuff. Now I'm not sure if that's true or not, but better safe than sorry. Uh, I'm going to catch a shower, and well, I'll catch a steam, and I will see you in the next episode. This has been Sokka. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. And I will see you in the next My Summer Car video. Take care.